Basically, the project was chaff, which was catch it, cart it, cook it, crush it, or cremate it. So three rows of stationary bars, four rows of bars spinning in between them. And it throws the weed seed up against the wall, the outside row of bars, doing 750 kilometres an hour. The market had 280 horsepower. We need 60 or 80 horsepower to run this. If you took 80 out of 280, it wouldn't even go along. Today, fortunately, the head of manufacturers have given us five and six hundred horsepower so we can steal some horsepower out. And the other fortunate thing about a header for my project and for chaff carts and that, the header actually divides the product you're harvesting into three sections. You know, grain in the top, straw in the middle, and chaff in the bottom. There's around about 98% of the weed seeds of all our crops end up in the chaff fraction. So that my project recognised that and I said, basically what I want to do is beat this char fraction to death. Along came the cage mill. As soon as I saw it working in Collie, pouring coal in the top about that round and coming out, you've seen the barbecue briquettes? That's what they made the briquettes after it beat through a cage mill. It was being so tested, um, actually feed coloured ryegrass seeds into it, into the char. They actually feed coloured ryegrass seeds into the chaff. They catch it out of the bottom on pollen cloth socks, take it back to the students in UDWA, and they sit there with tweezers picking the pieces out, and then they put them on agar and germinate them. So we're looking at around anywhere between 98 to 99% kill of all the known weed we're going to grow. Windrowing for me is a huge tool, and it's my sledgehammer. And I know you don't want to windrow because it comes at a cost and it's a pain in the ass. And harvest weed seeds are a pain in the ass as well. I'm sorry about that. And it comes at a cost. You've got to buy the thing and you've got to put a bit more diesel in. But the real problem is who's managing your farm now? Are you managing your farm? Who is? Passing the buck now, Do you reckon you're managing your farm? Who is? The weeds, the weeds are calling the shots. They are on my farm. They're telling me what row spacing I use, what direction I sow, where I put my fertiliser, what chemical I use, what time I put it on. Suddenly lost control and they're calling the shots. Whereas now I feel at home, Tim's, Tim's my boss, he's back in control. He made that decision to sow dry. Fortunately it actually rained in the middle. We only had 15 mil. It rained in the middle, but we had all the canola in half the barley. Now, because of harvest weed seed, it enabled him to make that call. Now, with the windrowing, have any of you seen Michael Walsh's work on harvest day one to harvest day 30? Do you really need to get onto this weed smart and have a look at all this work that's been done on... on um, Harvest weed seed management. Peter Newman, Michael Walsh, and all that. It's brilliant stuff. It's all scientific. So, wouldn't it be nice to harvest the whole crop the day it's ready? All the weeds would be standing up. Well, in my program, well, we'll go back. Michael Walsh did the harvest day one out to day 30, and he did all the seed retention of ryegrass, <coughs> grass, wild oats. And it is actually a lot better than you think. But my program now, I'm going harvest day one minus 10. So I can come in 10 days, at least before harvest, and, and windrow cereals and that at 40% moisture, put them in the windrow, and that's, the weeds are in there with them, and they're locked up in the, in the thing. It's a sledgehammer, it comes at a cost, but it just works so much better. Now, I'm not telling you that you have to go on windrow. I'm telling you what the options are. Now, I would say in a couple of years' time, we'll take windrowing out and we'll go back and it just may come back in. Because this thing's not going to be the silver bullet to be all and end all. There'll be some clawback for dry season or this or that or that. But windrowing for me is a real opportunity to get the sledge out. I've had the integrator for three years. Right? Um, got mine in one in a... Well, my brother and I were farming together still, one in 9120 and one in 8230. It really doesn't interfere with the, with the capacity of the combine. These things are so over horsepower now, 
you just end up ticking more bloody drain out the back using the horsepower that you do operating the feet at its cleaning capacity. And I think that's so important. I can run mine to its cleaning capacity. My AE230 runs on about 103%. My 9120 runs on about 95, 96. So to me, it's just harvest, carry on as though there's nothing. Now I use it every paddock, every time. Probably three or four litres of fuel to the hectare, but that's a cheap weed control. And I'll just good keep country. using it all. It's high reactive iron, non-wetting, aluminium toxicity, low pH, and I actually call it ship gravel. So I need to retain all the material I can. So all the chaff and that's chopped up, the nutrients all spread back out. All the K goes back out. I don't get this stratifying of the material. So if you row burn, you burn all the straw. Now once again, if you look at the RE website, Peter Newman's done the work on nutrient removal, and he's got it down to the dollars. And uh, I don't know how you blokes go in this country. I don't know this country, uh, whether you've got to use a heap of K or what have you, but that big for me is the, it's the only system that puts all the nutrient back out on the ground. Um, you look at what's been manufactured now. So basically, De Bruin Engineering won the contract from GRDC to produce the product. Same, same on that. I actually went out, I said I've got this known ready ryegrass country and, and bromegrass country. I shot out just before I came. Now these, these, the, the ryegrass and the, and particularly the brome was bobbing up as a bug of a weed. So with the windrowing and the destructor, I've now got this patch of brome, it just sits out from, on one edge of the paddock. It's gone. I couldn't find a brome grass plant. The barley's tilling, so you know, whilst it's dry, the barley's tilling in amongst it. So, so I'm seeing a huge decline. We've changed our whole program to 45 foot header, 45 foot cedar, and 90 foot front. Bear in mind, we're only a fraction of the size you blokes. So, we know now where the where the windrow is. We've actually sowed some canola this year where we, we've got the boom spray on the front of the bar. We shut down the bar and just left the five jets above where the windrow is. So that's our first foray into reducing the herbicide, whereas the rest of the bar didn't have it on. So we are pushing down that path, but I'm certainly not going to stand here and say we're smashing the chemicals at all, but I really feel we're on the cut. And the best way to explain it is, I don't think I'm losing the game. I reckon I've plateaued. I haven't started to go up. I can't categorically say I'm starting to go up. And I reckon the fight against the, the weeds, I've stopped losing the fight, and I'm starting to get on the other side. That's how I feel. Don't ring me up in 12 months' time and say, this fucking thing hasn't done anything. You need three years. First two years, you go, shit, what a waste of money. Then a third year, you say, oh yeah, oh yeah. Then the numbers go down. You will not smash your numbers in year one. You've got to have... And once again, go back to that scientific work that Ari have done, and they'll show you all that. You've got to have that confidence, I'm afraid. Um, Bryce, we, last year we ran them at 28. 28. 28. And we, yeah, at 28, you know, if it's running at 3,000, no blockage. When it's 28, we started having having blockages and issues, when it, especially at night or when it's tough. Um, then we tried 27 versus the 31 machine property. Not got a capacity to slow down yet. Into those mills comes out, they don't stop. We'll start it up. 